So today we're going to have AI write all of our measure descriptions and comment all of our measure code and then insert those into our model in one go. So it's both super fast and pretty straightforward. You can probably extend this to do the same thing for your columns using the exact same technique. So you could even give it context about your data source. So for example, if you have a report using Salesforce data, you can tell AI that and it can go and get the standard column definitions from the Salesforce documentation and insert those in your model. So there's some really great opportunities here if you can see where I'm going with this. But but if you're wondering why you would want to do it in the first place, the first question that people tend to ask when they see a report for the first time is, how is this measured? If you combine the technique in this video with the new info.view feature, so that's info.view.measures columns and tables, you can essentially answer that question before they have to ask it. You can even do that contextually, like in a tooltip or on a dedicated report page. I have another video that shows how to set that half of it up. I'm going to link it both in the video description and it'll be on the end screen. So for some context on how this works, as of 2025, there is a feature called TMDL in Power BI. TMDL stands for Tabular Model Definition Language. And what this does is it lets you both export and import information about your model and changes to your model in Power BI Desktop. So that model context is what makes it possible for AI to be able to work with your data, to create measures or to create measure descriptions or to add comments, that kind of thing. This video was inspired by a post by Rui Romano on LinkedIn. His post was about how to add measure descriptions. We're extending that technique to add comments in our DAX as well as running it through several different AI models to see how the output varies by model. If you're not familiar with Rui Romano, he's the program manager who owns the TMDL feature at Microsoft. So he's kind of like the TMDL godfather. If you want to keep tabs on awesome ways to use TMDL in Power BI, you should follow him on LinkedIn. I'm gonna put his profile in the video description and a link to the post. So without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna do two things. We're going to turn on TMDL as a feature because it's in preview, so you have to turn it on. And we're going to make a calculated table that shows us all of our measures and their descriptions so that we can browse through and look at them easily. So I have one here, but to make this, what you do is you go to table tools in the toolbar. If you're on a different tab in Power BI desktop, it may be in different places. So from the report view, you just click on new table. If you're in the table view, it's under table tools, new table. So we're gonna click on that. And then in there, just type in whatever you want your table name to be. So you could call this measures and then set it equal to info view measures and hit the checkbox. And that's done. Now to turn on TMDL, you go to the file tab in the menu option and settings down on the lower left and then go to options and then under global go to preview features and make sure the box next to tmdl view at the bottom here is checked and click ok you'll probably have to restart power bi desktop and then what that does is it creates a new tab over here on the left that says tmdl next to it so this tab is going to be where we pull out the model information and then put our updated model information back in and click apply and that's going to push all of those changes so in tmdl the first thing you're going to want to do is pull in your measure into the screens. I have all of my measures in a single table, so it makes it easier to pull them over. That's not required. It just makes it easier to drag them. So what you do is you select your first measure and then hold down shift and click your last measure. That'll get all of them except for anything that's in folders. So the folders it skips. So watch what happens when I do this. So I'm going to select all of these. You can hold down control to deselect things if you want to, like these dev measures. I don't want those included. When I open up this folder, you'll see that the measures inside the folder didn't get selected. So you have to hold down control and click those and then drag this whole pile of stuff over into the TMDL screen. What that does is it takes all the code for all those measures and puts it into one pile of text. I want to point out here that as far as I can tell, the structure of this TMDL is very important. So the tabs are very important. If you do any updating to this, you need to make sure that the tab alignment stays consistent. That's going to be something that we relate to AI in our prompt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all this, control A to select all, control C to copy, and we're going to head on over to our favorite AI tool of choice. So this will work with pretty much any tool. The restriction being on how many characters you're allowed to send it and get back out. So the free models will work if you have a small model. If you have a large model, you may need to have a paid AI option to not hit the character limit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to four different models, and then I'm going to take the results and have AI tell me which one is the best. We're going to see what it says. So I'm going to start with GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot is currently free. It's something that is in VS Code. VS Code is also a free 
tool. If you work somewhere that restricts software installation and downloads, just be aware that VS Code is often one of those things that shows up in the software center that they let you install. So check your software center. I'm going to put a link in the video description to the free sign up for GitHub Copilot in case anybody wants to try that out. So in here, I'm just going to create a new file. I'm just going to make it a text file because it doesn't really matter. And we're going to paste in that code from TMDL view. So there is a Copilot icon up here in GitHub. If you click on that to open it, we can enter a prompt here and it will use whatever is in the open file as context. GitHub Copilot is very idiosyncratic compared to some of the other AI options. You need to really emphasize that it needs to do all of what you want. Otherwise, it will only do some of what you want and try and pass that off as OK. So the prompt that I've been working with explicitly says you need to do this for every single measure and return all of those. I'm going to put the prompt in a blog post and link it in the video description if you want to copy paste. But here it is. All this says is please help me add measure descriptions for each measure by inserting description. The syntax for these descriptions is to prefix by triple slash. So you tell it that and you tell it what tone you want it to use. Tell it to use both the measure name and the DAX in its description. I tell it to summarize what the DAX is doing, not to just repeat the code as the description because it'll sometimes do that. And I tell it to run on all measures, keeping the tab structure exactly the same. And then you can add a character limit if you want to. We're going to send this. So I know when I watched Rui do this, he was able to push a button to push the changes back to his file. I don't see an option to do that in mine because I'm a GitHub Copilot noob. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste it over to our other page here. So this is the output from GitHub Copilot. I'm going to have it run another task on this before we use it. So I'm going to do the new chat here and we're going to tell it to. So here's our second prompt. I'm asking it to use double forward slash comments. So those are the ones that show up inside the DAX to explain what each piece of the DAX is doing in context. I'm adding a limit here that says only do this for measures that are more than two lines long, because if it's one line long, you probably don't need a comment on what it's doing because I did hit the character output limit when I ran this on everything without that constraint. We're going to send this So GitHub. Copilot will sometimes leave out large chunks of code. So make sure to review it before you use it. I think what it's doing is trying to save resources by being lazy. If it does that to you, you can tell it, hey, what are you doing? Please include everything and hit the send and it regenerates it. All right, let's try this out. I'm going to copy it. And back in Power BI, what we can do is we can either replace the script that we had before or we can create a new script. The advantage of a new script is that if you want to undo what you just did, you can just go run the other script again. We're going to paste that in, make sure to read through it and make sure it looks reasonable and hit apply. So that's done. Let's go check out our table. So you may notice when you look at the info.view.measures table that the descriptions are not showing up. That's normal. That's because we have to refresh this table to update the data. They do show up over here if you hover. So you can either do a refresh all on your model or if that is something that takes a long time for you because your model is large. What I like to do as a shortcut is just comment out this info.view.measures function and then erase the comment mark. So it basically just makes it reset that table. So here's what we got. You'll notice that some of these are blank. That's because I didn't take some of them over. By open up one of these measures, you can see that it's added code comments for each line of these things saying what it does. So that's great. If we go back to our report view, you can take those info.view.measures columns and put them in a visualization for your report viewers. I have a video on how to use the info.view.measures information contextually. So like either in a tooltip or on the page when you select a measure in a field parameter. That'll be in the end screen. But the next thing we're going to do is compare models and what their outputs are so that you can decide which one you want to use. So for example, with ChatGPT, I'm using O3 Mini High because it says that that one is great at coding and logic. But the concept works the same no matter which model you're using. You basically just paste in your TMDL for your measures and ask it to add descriptions to it. So if I come back here, I still have this. So I can put in our same prompt as before. And I'm going to put some line breaks in here to separate the code from the prompt. I don't know if that's strictly necessary, but I've heard it helps. And we're going to copy over the original TMDL script. So that was the one without the descriptions and see what it gives us. This one's kind of funny. It actually shows you the logic of what it's doing as it runs the prompt. That's done. I'm going to copy it and do the same thing as before and apply and reset our measures tables so we can look at them. So you can see that the language it's using on these ones is very much different. It's starting them all with this measure returns or this measure computes or this measure sums. A little bit repetitive. This was O3 mini. Claude, I noticed, did the best at coming up with human readable descriptions for everything, even though I was using the free version of Claude. So for Claude, I'm just going to use a few of the measures because I don't have a paid version and I hit the character limit when I try and use it on all of them. So we're going to go with these. I'm going to put in our prompt and our code. And we can also have it add the comments.
All right, so Claude's done. I'm gonna paste this back in. So looking at that Claude created, you can see that the language that it's using is much more human sounding in comparison to GitHub Copilot and GPT, what was it, 03 Mini or whatever it was we were using. The comments in here are pretty nice too. It's got a very kind of standardized format that it's using. Let's look at one that's formatted so you can actually read it. So you can see it's added these comments in here for each part. This comment down here is mine. It looks like it left that in, that's cool. So what I did with these is I stuck them in a table visual and exported them to CSV and then had GPT compare the the outputs to see which one was the best. I had it score them. It thought Claude was the best. I also thought Claude was the best, even in comparison to the GPT model that's supposed to be good at coding. If you try it on a different model, let me know what your outcome was. So which ones did you like? Which ones didn't you like? I'm really curious about how that pans out. As far as next steps go, if you take a look at the TMDL view, oh, I just noticed in this model tab, it's got the measures in here too. So you don't have to fiddle with the folder structure. I think you can probably just drag them all from this model view. So that's a good tip. But Another cool thing that you could do is drag in your tables. So for example, if I drag this in here, that's got all of the column information on it. So you could have it add descriptions for all of your columns and probably for your table, although I haven't tried either of those things yet. And again, if you give it some information about what your data source is, it might be able to add more context. So that's how to do measure descriptions and comments with TMDL. If you want to know how to use this contextually inside of your reports so that your viewers can actually see it, check out this video. Thank you.